first video with my new hair color. <laughs> when you start kimono and you research what you need for wearing a kimono, it's very intimidating because there's so much stuff popping up and everybody tells you something different. So I had this video on my list for a very long time where I just talk about kimono items, show you what it is, how it's called in Japanese and how you use it and if you actually really need it. So when you're just starting up with kimono and wanna know how to use those different things and what you need for your first kimono, or when you just wanna know what different kimono items are out there because I have quite a big collection, this is the right video for you. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and licensed kimono teacher and stylist. I actually have a lot of videos shooted in August and September and these are all really special videos that I really wanted to make and most of them are Japanese. <laughs> which means I have to make subtitles for that, which usually takes hours and days and yeah. So don't be, when you're going to stay on this channel, when you're already a while on this channel, so don't be surprised when suddenly the sun comes out, <laughs> when suddenly there is a Japanese video with me suddenly having blonde hair again. It's just because that is a video I have filmed way earlier this year before that. Let's wait until it gets darker. All those little items, accessories you need for wearing a kimono are called komono in Japanese. And today I really want to focus on komono, what is out there and what you really need. There is an undergarment that is called hadagi or I think other schools also call it hadajupan. And that is the first layer. And yes, you're actually supposed to wear nothing under that. That is a layer that goes directly onto your skin. It's usually made of cotton. There are two piece hadagi and one piece hadagi. I prefer two piece, but it depends what you like more. On that, that also depends on your silhouette, if you need that or not you put the so-called hoseigi. Hoseigi is kimono padding. It shapes your body a little more into a smooth silhouette. <laughs> that looks actually best with kimono. And yeah, it depends on your silhouette if you need it or if you're not needed. It also depends on how you dress yourself or what occasion you dress yourself how comfortable you want to be. It is actually a very individual topic and I usually want to do a individual session on that to show people or to tell people what they need, in which way, how much they actually have to pad. But I also made a video on kimono padding only for the hip padding first and that I will also link down below. But I'm planning on making finally also chest padding video. So look forward to that. I'm still, I still have a few sewing projects I have to finish up first, but it's actually planned for in autumn or winter of this year. So if you want to know more about padding, please stay on my channel. Over those layers, you usually put on your juban. It could be a naga juban that is a one piece undergarment or a han juban that is a two piece undergarment. With that juban, you have to probably, when you purchase your first ever, you probably have to sew a so called han eri onto it. That is just a second color sewed onto the juban color. And you can see it's in my case here, this colorful piece of cloth right here. And I have pinned this on with safety pins. You could do that. Or you could also sew it on. I have for both of that tutor tutorials on my channel that I will link down below. I have so much to link in this video. So you can check those videos out. Into this Han Eri, you usually put a color stiffener. That is called Eri Shin in Japanese. It is a piece of plastic, just like so. And this is going to shape your back collar really nicely. 
The edition is definitely a must-have among all kimono items. You need one, it is very essential. You can make it by yourself when you don't have one out of paper. I have also a tutorial for that. But if you can, I would really, really recommend you to purchase one because a really nice edition changes the look of your kimono style a lot. Oh, it's so hell. It makes me wahnsinnig here. Please ignore the it's being too light or too dark thingy. I'm just giving totally up on it because it is very, very cloudy day today. Next up is the item you need when wearing a kimono. It is a tie. In Japanese you call this himo and I very often see in stores the name Koshi himo. There is a reason why I don't call Koshi himo Koshi himo, himo and only use the term himo. Um, but I probably don't want to go into detail right now. You can ask me below in the comments. You need three to four himo for wearing a kimono outfit. The first one will hold together your juban or your naga juban. Then you need a second one that goes around the hip of your kimono, koshi himo. The third one goes under your chest. You also call that munahimo in Japanese. And again, according to the obi arrangement, you also might need even more. But when you're longer on my channel and when you watch most of my kimono tutorials and other videos, you know that I don't wear my kimono with ties. Okay, today I do, I can do it, but I usually use elastics when dressing myself in kimono. And there are many different types of elastics and I'm gonna show you what is out there and what you use in which way. Probably the most famous elastic belt is the so-called Korin Berto. I think most kimono enthusiasts call it Korin Belt. And you can see it's a rather short elastic with two clips on the side. And I usually have them in the length um, equals the width of my back. So this is the width of my back. These are replacing Hemo. I use this Korin Belt for putting on my undergarments. I think it shapes the color the best and I really love it, it's very comfortable. You could also use this instead of a Munahimo for the kimono. I do not recommend it. I would rather say use this for your undergarment and use then a tie as a Munahimo, but that is up to you how you like to dress yourself. It's not a must have, but when you have one of those, I think it is really helpful. To replace the first tie on the kimono, the so-called koshi himo, I have another belt. I think it's called waist belt. This is a belt that is basically really just replacing a koshi himo. It can be hooked or clipped on the front and it should be the length so it goes twice around your hip. It is really comfortable when wearing your kimono with these kind of belts instead of a himo around the hips because it's flexible and moves with you and you can also adjust it. There are also these kind of belts that have a stopper onto them and there are many different ways how to use the stopper it depends on the kimono school. And you basically can also um, take the stopper off when you don't like it. I don't wanna do this right now. But when you find these with a stopper, definitely get one of those. You can also take the stopper off and use it like just so. Or you can also use the stopper when you know how to. When you wanna replace the second tie of the kimono, the so-called munahimo, you have many options. You could replace it with a Korin belt I was just talking about earlier, but you could also replace it with a two-piece Korin belt. This is a very long and a little thicker Korin belt that is clipped in the center and you use two pieces for your two sides of the collar and then clip it on the front. I have a video on how to use this for your yukata. 
it is very comfortable and you can by the way also use this for your naga jupan you should probably just try it it's very cool and my favorite item actually to replace the munahimo is simply our super long coating belt it is very long in the end it's as long as the two-piece coating belt only difference is this is one piece I think the school who actually came up with them have a patent on it and I have never seen them in any other kimono item store than that school. Um, we'll see if I, be, if I will be able to collaborate with them and put them into my web shop. Um, we'll see, I can make any promises. But I want more people using those because this is the most comfortable kimono item you can have in your closet believe me you won't even feel that you're wearing kimono okay i'm going to feel that you're wearing kimono but yeah next item that you can put on top of the belts or your ties is a so-called datejime or datemaki um, it is just a broad tie i think i have showed several times in different tutorials how to use this i don't use it at all. I sometimes use it with my nagajupam, but I barely use it over my kimono anymore. But yeah, a lot of other people do really strong belie strongly believe that these are very, very essential kimono items. I thought so too for a very long time. I was wrong. It is wrong. You don't need those at all. You can dress yourself perfectly with only ties, but it's probably never wrong to have them at home. And what goes on top of that when you have put on your kimono is a so-called obita. I usually use one with elastics on the side that I then can clip on the front and turn, but there are also obita without elastics that you will have to put into the obi when wrapping the obi around your waist. But when you want to try a lot of different obi arrangements and different obi styles and sometimes tied on the front or on the back, I do recommend an obi ita with the elastics on that. Let's dive into the items for tying an obi. I usually use a kimono clip. I recommend these especially for beginners. There are tricks to wrap the obi around your waist without those clips, but when you have one of them it is just really 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 convenient what items you then need for tying the obi depends heavily on what obi you're tying and what arrangement you're tying today i thought i will show you what you need for otaiko a niju daiko which is a formal way to tie uh, otaiko or a ginza musubi which is one of the more casually obi ties in the process of tying these you need one to four additional ties and i also recommend to have a obi makura especially for the otaiko obi makura is very essential there are many different types and many different shapes and it all depends on what you're tying with this makura you can see that i also use uh, obi makura for my ginza musubi and it is a little smaller and also wider than my normal obi makura i would use for a taiko by the way you probably can tell in the video that the obi makura that i'm used for my niju taiko that is this one looks a little different from my obi makura i use for normal otaiko musubi which is this one it is longer this one is longer and it also has a little more volume and i think it looks a little more formal and gorgeous with a niju daiko no you don't need them you can use the normal otaiko makura for mostly everything um, so don't be confused yes there are many different shapes of obi makura out there to cover up the obi makura you need a so-called obi age which is a piece of cloth like this. You could also use a silk scarf or another piece of scarf instead of a obi age, but it's definitely needed. In my video, I was also using a shiburi obi age. It's an obi age that is heavily textured with 
shibori dye this one is white so it's actually not dyed it just has shibori on it and these are usually only used for formal kimono a lot of people ask me if they can wear shibori obi age with casual kimono there is nothing wrong with it there is nothing wrong with it just i personally wouldn't do it anymore i did it when i was a kimono beginner because i didn't know better but when i studied more about kimono and found out what shibori some is how hard it is actually to dye what status it actually had in the edo period in japanese history uh, you can't just dye it anymore with casual kimono because it's such a special and very expensive obiage and you want to keep it special by wearing it with your formal kimono but nothing wrong with pairing it with casual kimono anyway just be aware that it's very special very exclusive very luxury and to hold then the whole obi style together you need a obijime for ginza musubi and you also need this for niju daiko in this video i am using a sambur himo that you can pair with a so-called obidome those kimono brooches they're not as wide as a normal obijime and they're also a little shorter and that is because you tie them on the front and then you're supposed to turn the knot to your back and hide it under the obi because you're gonna have the obidome on the front for the homongi i'm using a little thicker and in this case around obijime for formal kimono you usually use a wider obijime which actually also leads into the you want to look a little more gorgeous and extra when wearing formal kimono you can also see that my obijime here has gold in it which makes it totally inappropriate for casual kimono so that is it these are all the items you are using when dressing yourself in a kimono i have plenty of tutorials on my channel for how to wear a kimono how to wear a yukata how to use some of those items how to tie different obi arrangements and i also have a lot of diy's that will show you how to make those items so you don't have to buy them. So when you wanna learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For those who are longer here would really love to know what kind of items were new to you and what kind of items are actually missed out on and you find really, really convenient when dressing yourself in a kimono. And yes, I think that's it. And I talk to you in my next video. Bye!